understand this from a deployment perspective, one of the things you're going to need to do on your site survey is you may need to set up the access point to operate on different data rates. So for instance, let's say in your site survey, you discover that the customer is deploying no 802.11b equipment, then you'll want to turn off the data rates that relate to 802.11b, i.e. 1, 2, 5 5.5 and 11 megabits per second. The way you do that is you'll go into the access point and actually turn off different modulation and coding schemes. And so in this slide, I wanted to introduce you to the fact that what we were talking about by setting up different modulation and coding schemes directly relate to what you're seeing when you configure your access points. And these are the configurations that are shown for 80211 n and so when you go in you can actually configure your access point to support different modulation and coding schemes and those modulation coding schemes are relating to bpsk qpsk 16 cram 64 cram just like we talked about and also the coding rate half rate coder two third rate coder three quarter rate coder and a five six rate coder so that's what you're doing when you configure your access points. This section really should have helped you understand exactly what's going on and why your data rates are changing as you move around in the cell. So again, in good radio conditions, closer to the access point, I'm able to get up to the higher data rates because I'm able to use the higher modulation schemes and the lower coding rates when I move out to the edge of the cell my modulation scheme will reduce and also my coding rate has to increase which means my effective data rate will reduce. When you think about deploying your access point one of the things you need to think about is what are the users expectation for data rates and typically users will say oh I want the highest data rates everywhere and what that's going to mean is that you'd have to deploy a lot more access points because you'd actually have to deploy them supporting 16 QAM and 64 QAM and so in reality what a customer wants is a combination of good throughput and higher data rates but combined with coverage because if you're going to deploy a cell which is only supporting higher data rates your coverage is going to be a lot less and you're going to have to deploy a lot more access points which means the cost of the deployment will be a lot more expensive so finding the right balance between throughput and coverage is an important consideration when you start doing your site survey and now you should start to understand the physics behind why the data rates change and how you should consider deploying your customer network. So now what I want to do is I want to take a look at the signals going over the air and to do that I'm actually going to use the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. Now this is one of the tools that is will actually be on your certification exam and that you should be familiar with. So there are many different tools that you can use and I could show you here for looking at spectrum and channels etc. What I want to do is I particularly want to use the SIS to go spectrum expert so we can start to become familiar with that tool. In this demonstration I'm using a tool called Channelizer and Channelizer is not on your certification exam so it's not a tool you're going to be tested on but it's a really nice tool for me to illustrate many of the concepts that we've been talking about in this introductory lesson. Now the advantage of this tool is that this tool costs just a few hundred dollars so if you want a fairly inexpensive tool just to take a look at what access points, what wireless communications is out there, this is a really nice starting point. Later on we're going to be using the Cisco Spectrum Expert and that tool costs thousands of dollars and of course it does a lot more and does a lot of different types of things. 
So the first thing I want you to note in this demo is the x-axis. So notice along here, these are my frequencies. And so you can see I'm operating in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And then what's really important is along here, this y-axis. This is indicating my receive signal strength, what is referred on the chart as my amplitude, and is being displayed in dBm. Now why this is important is that this is my received signal strength. This is what tells me whether or not I can communicate with that access point. So down here, these access points which have power levels of minus 90, these are my neighbor's access points. And they're so far away that I cannot establish a reliable connection with them. Even if I manage to connect occasionally, I'm going to be losing a lot of data over the air and potentially dropping my connection all the time. The signal strength is just too low for me to establish communications with them. Now these ones up here, like Avril's network, and my South access point, and my Cisco network, these ones I'm receiving enough signal strength that I can actually establish and authenticate and associate with those access points. So again, the y-axis a measure of received signal strength. Remember, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the received signal strength indicator. So it's really important to make sure you understand what that's telling me, a measure of energy in that radio channel. So the other thing I want to take a look at now is actually the graph itself. And you'll notice that you're seeing a range of shapes here. These are all 80211 products, but some of them are B, some of them are G, and some of them are N. And let's see if we can distinguish between them. So this one here, that's shaped in gray and looks like a bell, and this one here in yellow, these ones are a direct sequence spread spectrum radio, 802.11b. And so B spreads a signal over a 22 megahertz channel, which is what you're seeing here at the base. The signal spread right across that 22 megahertz channel. These ones here that are more squared shape, those are OFDM, i.e. they're 802.11g or 802.11n. And you can see some of them are occupying a 20 megahertz channel, and some of them are operating on a 40 megahertz channel. Now again, 802.11g can only operate on a 20 megahertz channel, but 802.11n may operate on a 20 megahertz channel or a 40 megahertz channel. So I know that Avril's network and Cisco are 802.11n. These other ones I'm not sure about. However, if I come over here and actually choose the Networks Table tab, it will actually display the networks for me. And if I come down, I can see here Avril's network, which is 802.11n, it's an infrastructure network, and it's getting up to 300 megabits per second. And notice over here that it's deployed on channel 1 as the primary, and then channel 5 as the secondary channel, and that's what you're seeing displayed above. If I come down a little bit, we'll see the Cisco access point. And you can see here that it's also getting up to 300 megabits per second. But you can see I've assigned it as a primary to channel 10, and then it's using channel 6 as a secondary channel to get the 40 megahertz. You also notice here it's also giving me the MAC address, also telling me what kind of security is on that access point. So the main thing to get from this demo is that 802.11b, g, and n all transmit in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Which channel I allocate is incredibly important because really what I want to do is have them on channel 1, 6, and 11 in order to make sure they're not overlapping in this country. And here on purpose I chose it so you've got a mixture of different channels and so of course in this environment it's not going to be very clean and you're going to get interference between them.
The other thing I want you to note is along the y-axis, and again, this is the measure of the received signal strength, and again, I need to recover enough of the signal. I need a strong enough signal so I can get your bits. So just lastly, I did want to show you here by switching over to the Wi-Fi channels, just show you what channels these are actually operating on. It's a little bit easier to read than reading the frequency bands. So before we finish up on this section, a couple of terms to be familiar with. We talked about co-channel interference being the interference between two access points that are operating on the same channel. Adjacent channel interference, if you hear that term, that's interference by two access points that are operating on two channels which are adjacent to each other. So in our illustration, that would be an access point that would be operating, for instance, on channel 1 and another access point that was operating on channel 2. And remember, we talked about how disastrous that was and we had that illust live illustration in Denver. And so adjacent channel interference is interference caused by two channels transmitting that are adjacent to each other. The modulation and coding scheme index, remember that's what you're going to see when you configure your access points. Quadrature amplitude modulation, this is the modulation technique that combines both amplitude and phase modulation. So by altering the phase and the amplitude, I can distinguish between the ones and the zeros that I'm sending over the air. The received signal strength indicator is your measure of received signal strength. Very, very important to look at that, particularly when you're looking at the edges of the cell boundary. So this resource here is not directly related to you getting certified, but I thought it would be really interesting for you to take a look at. And this is a chart that's produced by the FCC here in the United States, and it shows how spectrum is allocated in the States. And again, there are similar charts if you're working in Europe or in Asia that are produced by the local regulators. And I thought it'd be an interesting one just to show you that the spectrum is allocated and you'll be able to detect in here where the 2.4 and where the 2.5 gigahertz bands but you'll also be able to see where your cellular mobile radio is operating and also where the satellite is operating and overall it's just a really nice colored chart to have in your office. So let's talk about what we covered today. We took a look at the spectrum. We took a look at the range of spectrum, talked about how we're focused in Wi-Fi on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. We talked about how different Wi-Fi technologies operate in different channel bandwidth and how 802.11b operates in a 22 megahertz channel, A and G operate in a 20 megahertz channel, 802.11n operates in a 20 or in a 40 megahertz channel. And of course, to get up to the higher data rates, I'd like to be operating in a 40 megahertz channel. We talked about the frequency planning aspects and how when I deploy my access point, I have to decide not only which frequency band, but which channel I'm going to operate on. We then took a look at the basic components of a digital radio, i.e. your transmitter and receiver, and we talked about the major function of the transmitter was to encode your signal and to modulate your signal. And encoding is a way of adding forward error correction to your signal so that you don't have to retransmit when you lose bits over the air. And we talked about how modulation is a way of representing your ones and zeros in waveforms. We talked about how the combination of modulation and coding is referred to as modulation and coding schemes, and those are programmed in your access point. We then took a look at a live demonstration using the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. We just used this tool to take a look at some channel bandwidths and the channels we were operating on, and we got familiar with the term the received signal strength, which again we're particularly going to look at later on when we look at where is the cell edge boundary. I hope you enjoyed this module. Please come back for the next one.